Okay, let's take a look at some elliptical goodness here. Um, we're pretty much uh, doing everything we can possibly can be doing with this equation of an ellipse, finding center foci, vertices, eccentricity, and we're going to go ahead and sketch this. Um, I think sketching it is a big part of helping us find the, the foci and vertices as well. So, uh, as we know, we've got an equation of ellipse here because we have... Um, like signs, both of these uh, coefficients are positive. We have an x squared and a y squared. So if there is a graph, it is an ellipse. And we need to group our x terms and factor out a 9. And this is an important concept. I'm not factoring out a 9 because I can. I'm factoring out a 9 out of the x's because I have to. Had the 36 been a 17, I'd still be factoring out a 9. Um, and we'll be taking a look at problems like that uh, in a later uh, in a later video. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and group my x's, factor out the 9, leaving with x squared plus 4x. I'm going to leave a blank for completing the square. The y's, I'm going to factor out a 4 because I have to. I get y squared minus 6y, leave a blank to complete the square. And I'm going to subtract 36 to the other side, which eventually I'm going to want to force into being 1. So at this point, I need to ask, what do I need to do to complete the square? Well, I take half of 4, 2, and square it, 2 squared 4, and put in a plus 4. But that did not exist in this equation. We'll come back to that. Then I take half of negative 6, negative 3, negative 3 squared, plus 9. But once again, that was just an invention of my own. It wasn't part of this equation. So our two sides of the equation are now out of balance because of the 4 and the 9 I put in there. But this is a big concept. I didn't really add 4 when I put this in here. I really added 9 times 4. So to balance for that, I'm going to add 36. And likewise, when I put the plus 9 in, I didn't really add 9, I added, coincidentally, 4 times 9 plus 36. Okay, at this point I should have perfect square trinomials, and I get 9 times x plus 2 squared plus 4 times y minus 3 squared equals just 36. Here's another important concept. If you're not paying close attention, you may think I'm about to divide both sides by 36 because of the 9 and the 4, that being the least common multiple. That doesn't have anything to do with my next decision. My next decision is to force this side to become 1. And that's why I'm dividing by 36. This is kind of a nice canned problem where things work out very well for us. Um, and again, we'll be looking at some more complicated ones soon. So this gives me standard form of an ellipse, x plus 2 squared on 4, plus y minus 3 squared on 9, equals 1. And now I've learned that a is 3, b is 2. I've also learned that because this is a y squared on a squared, 9 being bigger than 4, uh, I have a, a tall ellipse. Other things I know, I know my center of this ellipse is we refer to my box, most interesting value of x being negative 2, my voy, most interesting value of y being 3. So I'm centered to the left 2, up 3. So let's take a look at the graph of this. Centered to the left 2, up 3. And then I'm just going to add four points to this graph, and those are really, really easy to come by. My b value of 2 is underneath the x. x is a right-left direction, so I'm going to go right and left 2. To the right 2, to the left 2, and then my 3 being under the y 
y is an up down variable so i'm going to go up up three down three so up three up to six down three from the center down to zero and that defines my ellipse Let's see how i can do here not too bad okay so what else is missing i've got the center i now have my vertices being here and here my vertices are located how did i get to the top vertice i went to the left two i went up three to the center but then i went up an additional three i went to the left two for my bottom ver vertex i went up three but back down three to zero so i've got vertices i've got my center i've got the graph um, i still need foci and my foci ought to be located here on the major axis somewhere around in here where at well i need to find the value of c and i know there's a pythagorean relationship between a b and c and a being the longest of those gets isolated so i have a squared nine equals b squared four plus c squared so c is square root of five so about 2.2, uh, 2.3-ish, somewhere in there. So I go up a little bit more than 2, down a little bit more than 2. And here's a, a challenge for some people is going ahead and naming the foci. I'll slip them in down here. Our foci, to get to those, to get to this focus point right here, I did not go left 2 and then up the whole way. I really went left 2, up to 3, and then up an additional root 5. To get to this focus, I didn't go to the left 2 and just up a tiny bit to it. I went to the left 2, up 3, and then back down root 5 to get there. So we've got all over the place here. We've got centers. We've got the foci. We've got the vertices. We've got the graph. We just need the eccentricity, and the eccentricity, a measure of the roundness, is just C on A, or in this case, square root of 5 on 3.